All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover how to fit all of this into this. All right, so things are generally laid out in the order that I'm gonna put them into the pack, starting from uh, my left and working to my right. We, the exclusion of this Cobra hood will actually be the last thing that I attach to the outside bottom of the pack, but it's over here and out of the way. So I'll go through things uh, as I pack them up and then put them into the ruck, all right? So right now, <clears throat> ruck is totally empty, all right? It's a uh, mystery ranch. I think it's the uh, saddle pack or SATL. It's not a huge pack. It's not really designed for uh, long sustainment, but we're gonna kind of push its capabilities and get all this stuff in there. And this isn't really a long sustainment loadout anyways. So the, uh, one of the first things we're gonna start with is sheltering materials. I've got a few items out here with a little bit of redundancy, but the first things are gonna go in the pack because they're gonna be the least likely things for me to use. So they're gonna go at the bottom is this larger tarp. Uh, it's this is self-contained bag. It has some stakes in there for setting it up and this old bivy bag, all right? So the least likely things for me to actually use, so they're gonna go on the bottom because things that we're not gonna be using a lot, uh, just go on the bottom of the pack, keep things that we want to make accessible towards the top of the pack. Now, <clears throat> this pack has a center zip, so that'll make it easier to access some of those bottom items and then shove them back in. Uh, and so there's a lot of packs that are like that, but in general, you can just pull things out very quickly if you compartmentalize the ruck well. So that's what we're gonna go with. And this is really simple, all right? Nothing fancy, no stuff sacks. I'm just gonna kind of fold this up and then just mash it down in the bottom. Easy day. All right. And then next, I'm gonna throw the tarp in there and I'm gonna keep that more towards the outside of the pack and leaving empty space for the next item. Now, when we're talking about sheltering, part of that is some form of insulation. So the bivy sack and the tarp will help protect us from the elements, but then having some kind of insulation. So this is a Kiferu uh, Super Wubi, right? And we will get back to this guy in a second because he is gonna get packed a little bit more towards the top, all right? Moving on, we are now gonna start packing out warming layers. So I've got a couple different options here, all right? First is a real basic grid fleece, like a level two type layer, all right, for cooler weather. Um, this is really good. It's good for wearing uh, on movements in colder weather. So that's why I've got this packing out. And then this is a, you know, more or less generic wooby hoodie uh, made out of the same material as your standard poncho liner. So it has really good warmth and this is really good to throw on once I'm static, keeping this dry, whereas this might get a little sweaty. Try to keep this dry. It's got the hood that I can pull over me in static positions because when you're static, it's easier to get colder. So something that's gonna keep you a little bit warmer. And then this particular one is reversible. So it works in more environments and hence why this one is chosen all right, for this. Now how waterproofed you choose to make your items is gonna depend on your environment. For this, these things are gonna be fairly weatherproofed. So I wouldn't be able to swim this ruck in or dive it in and expect the contents to be dry, but I can take this out and get in the rain and expect that my components are gonna be dry. Uh, and should I have to do a river crossing, all right, there are things I can do with my bivy pack and all that to ensure that all my components will stay dry, the whole load will stay dry. Now, this real simple roll top sack 
if you try to compress it and roll it before you put it in the pack, you're going to end up with air trapped inside the bag. So now that I just mash those two items down in there, press a little bit of air out, and before I actually close this sack up, I'm gonna pack it, and I'm trying to fill that space that I gave myself by putting the tarp in there. And exactly how sealed I go for this, again, it's depend what environment am I taking this into. So for me, I'm just trying to keep these things drier in case it rains. So once it's in the pack, pushing it out, a couple of quick rolls, more than secure enough. So a lot of that air is crushed out. That way it's not taking up extra volume inside the pack that I'm going to need. And it's easier to continue to try and push some of it out with only a few rolls in the top of that roll top bag. Now, <clears throat> the next thing that's gonna go in uh, is, this is actually six pairs of socks, but we look at this just as the spare clothing that you are packing out. So for me, that's just some extra pairs of socks uh, going into the small unit maneuver class we're gonna be teaching here soon. All these socks are on the gear list, so hence why they're packed out. Now, sacks like this that have the air purge valve are awesome because you get everything in there really tight and then you scrunch it down, air purges out, and you don't have to worry about excess air inside these bags. So these are really nice, but they're also a lot more expensive than just a standard roll top bag, all right? So this goes in and similar to the uh, tarp, it's gonna go towards the outside of the pack. Because I have this zipper, I can open it up and get to these components uh, if I don't want to dig through the top of the pack. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I need to start getting prepped into this pack is going to be my assault load. So this is my sustainment load. Next is the assault load. So the sustainment load is everything that's going to allow me to remain out in the field for longer periods of time. So my sheltering materials, warming layers, water, chow, all that good stuff. The assault load is the thing that I'm going to take with me if I'm going into the attack, if I'm going into the hide site, that's gonna carry more of my mission essentials. And in this case, I'm gonna fit it inside the pack. Depending on your pack system, you might be able to clip it to the top or the outside. Uh, you just wanna make sure however you're doing it, it's in a balanced way. Uh, so I like to try and fit them inside the pack. It's gonna be a very tight fit, but it will work. So this is a uh, Arbor Arms. Uh, it's a much older version of their Tradesman pack. So along with being my preferred go bag, it also can be adapted to clip into a plate carrier. Uh, I've got three quart Camelback inside there right now. Okay. And some kind of generic equipment that I'm gonna stick inside is a set of binos. Laser rangefinder, spare batteries, report formats. So if you're conducting reconnaissance, you need to have report formats. That gets zipped up. Now, something else to consider obviously is gonna be personal camouflage, right? And Things like uh, your binos and all that have lenses that reflect. So there are things you can do beforehand to prevent that, but just carrying spare nets like this that can be draped over your optics to mitigate that shine, but also they can be packed into pouches like this. So I've got a laser range finder and a battery case that are gonna make noise if they smack together all right, and are loose. However, if I pack in the net, 
I take up some of that volume. So now that prevents the items from being able to shift in the pouch and it's also sitting in between them so it prevents them from being able to contact each other. So I've mitigated any kind of noise discipline risks and I bring it out an extra net that I can use to camouflage my equipment if I am going to be setting up in a hide site or conducting a leader's recon. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so that is all that's going to go into this one for now. All right. Obviously your assault load is going to vary depending on what your mission is. All right. Now all I'm going to do with it is sit it behind the sock bag or spare clothing bag, however you want to look at it. Now, coming back to the Wooby. So when you've got things in a stuff sack like this, you can see it takes a very ball-like shape, spherical shape. This might be really easy to put in your rook if you have a much larger pack, uh, something like a Tack Taylor Malice rook or an old school Alice Mountain rook. You got all the room in it, this is really easy or some of the issue uh, packs in the military have sleep system carriers, right? If you're kind of running low on your space, sometimes you don't need to have these things compressed down. All right, I can loosen it up. And now that'll sit a lot flatter right here along the front of the pack instead of bulging out. So far in this pack, I've put a lot of things in there in different bags. You could avoid all the separate waterproofing bags if you just have one solid ruck liner. Thing to keep in mind is if you put in a ruck liner, any kind of other alternate access is no longer going to be usable because everything is now inside another sack within your ruck sack. The other thing is if you just throw all of your items loose inside that ruck liner, it's less compartmentalized as you start pulling items out. Like if I just had six loose pairs of socks, I start pulling things out to get to them, those socks are gonna start migrating around and I'm gonna lose track of exactly where they are in the pack. So you don't necessarily need to use waterproofing bags. If you use a ruck liner, you can just use mesh bags simple like laundry bags that you can pick up for cheap to help compartmentalize everything that goes into the pack so you always know where your stuff is. It's easy to access and easy to put back. Now, coming back around to layers. So I had the two uh, mid-weight layers that go in the pack and they are less likely for me to need while I'm moving because you get warm. Now, this puff layer is going to go towards the top as is my vapor barrier layer. And that is because while I'm moving and I stop for a halt for whatever reason we need to halt for on a movement, I don't want to strip off my fighting load, pull out a midweight layer, put it on, be comfortable for the halt, and then have to take all that off, put everything back on, pack it all up again. If I have these layers at the top of the pack and accessible, I can put this on just over the top of my fighting load and everything. I may not be able to close it up, but it'll keep me warm enough while I'm on the halt to prevent me from having any kind of cold weather injuries. And then when we stop, I can put it on underneath everything while we're in a position for a long period of time to again, avoid cold weather injuries. So I'm gonna pack these two items towards the top and I'm just gonna kind of stuff them around the sides. 
Now the vapor barrier layer. And one of the nice things about not putting everything in its own individual bag is I can push this stuff down and kind of find these empty voids to fill with this gear, all right? So now that's everything that's going in the main compartment. So I'll cinch that up, all right? And next, we're gonna move on to the top flap, all right? So this one conveniently pops off, which will make this next part a little bit easier. So in the top flap are items, you know, I am most likely going to also be needing quickly access. So always pack a beanie, a, uh, a beanie and a poncho liner are two items as far as layers and warming gear go that are always in my pack. Bush cover is also always a good idea. I always pack one out. Uh, even though we've taken to mainly wearing helmets for our night vision systems and everything else, you're definitely wearing that at night. From my background in reconnaissance, once you're sitting in a hide site in the middle of the day, you're probably not still gonna have your helmet on because there's not a need for it. So you put your bush cover on, uh, especially while you're in the observation post to just continue to maintain your personal concealment. Uh, simple field scarf. Uh, this one's got a desert digital pattern to it, All right? A lot of different uses for these things. Uh, I find them very handy. So I always pack one and I keep it accessible towards the top of the pack. Some cordage, uh, this is 1100 cord. Uh, typically I pack 550, but I just picked this up. It's already stowed neatly for me. So a lot of different ways you can do that, but it's always a good day to have a lot of cordage and that will be how we build our shelters uh, when it comes to that or if it comes to that. Field hygiene kit. So there is a lot of different stuff in here so that I can clean myself. I just got bug repellent. I've got uh, stuff in here for pain mitigation, any diarrheal, all kinds of stuff to just help me stay healthy and avoid getting sick. And another thing, especially going to cold weather environments when you're dealing with layers is you want to stay as clean as possible to keep your layers clean so they continue to function as intended. If they get dirty, then they start losing their properties to keep you warm. So hygiene kit, all right, important. Now, you've got water and there are a lot of ways to source water, depending on your environment. Typically, I will also have a uh, fanny pack that has a lot of water purification collection items in it. Um, but this is another packable device as another means of collecting water. All right, and I keep that towards the top. And then finally, I have an old standard issue poncho. Now, why would I carry a poncho and a tarp? It is definitely redundant. Uh, the reason I like carrying the poncho is it gives me a lot of what the tarp can and a little bit more. The tarp is much better at shelter. This is just much more versatile. One of the big things is if it's raining and I'm trying to keep my loadout and myself dry, uh, but I don't want to put on a jacket. I don't want to overheat. Uh, I can throw this on over the top of all of my gear. It'll just drape over everything, but there's still enough airflow to prevent me from overheating. And it does a decent job of preventing me from getting soaked uh, on an infill, all right? But another reason I'm packing this towards the top isn't so I can keep myself dry. It's so that when I stop for a map check at night, I pull out the poncho. <clears throat> we'll stop in a position with heavy concealment. I'll bury myself behind my pack with the poncho doubled up over, over the top of me, and that will mitigate or eliminate any kind of red lens light escaping from our position. And there's another benefit, just like the little net that I put in the assault pack, 
This also helps all these items from shifting around by taking up some of the volume uh, inside this compartment. And if things can't shift around, there's less noise that they're gonna make. So I'll attach it to the ruck again. Route my little drinky hose. And we're gonna bring, bring this bad Larry up a little bit closer. All right. So it's getting fairly burdened at this point. And we are definitely pushing the limits of this ruck's capacity, right? Now, I could have just used my normal mouse ruck that I kind of teased about earlier, and this would have been super simple. Uh, but using this smaller pack to carry these items out shows that it's very easy to pack with a smaller form factor. And if you start having trouble fitting the items in, then you need to start looking at, do I need all of these items? For what I'm about to do and for the weather this weekend, I could definitely get rid of the tarp and the bivy, but I just want to include them as items that you can pack out. And sometimes some of these redundancies uh, can be very useful. Gonna add a little bit more water to the load, which will bring me to a pretty meager five quarts in total. One on each side. Now, as far as the, uh, the blue tops are concerned, I've had a lot of these things for a very long time. They normally would be packed in pouches that would cover this. Uh, and I just need to use these things because they're taking up space in my garage. So, uh, but no, I am not saying you should use bright colored gear when you need to remain concealed. All right, those are strapped in. So that brings me out to five quarts of water in the pack. That's not a whole lot, uh, but in this given area, there's a lot of places where I can resupply that water. And I should also be planning for a lot of external resupply from whoever my support is. But if you don't have support, you're not in the military, you don't have that huge structure behind you, then you have means, or you should have means within your sustainment load and within wherever you carry your survival gear to continue to collect and purify water. And then lastly, all right, is throwing up this Cobra hood, right? Now it's just set up to cover my head and shoulders. I really don't need all the scrim on the back. All right. And now I don't really want all this stuff hanging off and snagging through the brush. All right. Or even just when I'm trying to uh, insert off a truck or anything like that. So I'm going to roll it inside to just minimize those snag hazards between the scrim and these 550 grids. And just attach it to bottom of the pack. All right. So now I have a fully loaded ruck, uh, and then these sustainment pouches on the front is where I would put the food that I need uh, for the field. Now, one thing I'm gonna note is you may have seen that the uh, hip pad is buckled behind the pack. Uh, I don't wear the hip pads when I'm patrolling. If I were doing a conditioning hike, then I would wear them and help distribute that load. Uh, for patrolling, I don't wear the hip pad, uh, just so if I need to ditch the ruck, whether that's doing a breakout drill or I just need to put the ruck down really quickly and go off and move something, um, I just find that to be an extra step that kind of gets in the way. Uh, so I normally leave it just secured around the pack. I don't remove it because I could use it, 
All right, longer movements, really heavy packs. It can be nice to have that. And again, if I use this ruck for a conditioning hike, it's there where I need it. So it's not really taking up any space. Uh, and in your positions, a lot of times these things uh, can make decent pillows. So I like leaving them on regardless. They're there if I want to use them, but I typically don't when I am on patrol. And there you have it. I have a mission ruck that would sustain me for about 48 hours. Uh, and that comes from the water. The water I have packed in here with this five quarts is only about 48 hours worth of water. So that means I need to be planning where I'm gonna be getting my resupplies from, from local sources of water and whatever kind of support structure I do have available, I should be coordinating to get good water from them as well to refill as I go and keep me in the field for longer. One little thing I didn't really mention as I was packing it, all right, you notice I did put some items all right, up against the outside of the pack because by pack design, I can grab them. These are also lightweight items. The heavier weight stuff, the mission essential stuff in my assault load and the water is going closer to my back as I wear the pack uh, and that helps with weight distribution um, while I'm walking around, right? So you definitely wanna keep the weight closer to your back and a little bit more towards the top, all right? Now, exactly how I packed it does not have to be exactly how you pack your ruck. Again, this is just ideas if you kind of knew it this, whether you're civilian, military, law enforcement, and you're looking at needing or wanting to pack a ruck, these are ideas that you can take. Did talk about some of the redundancies. If you start packing and you're running out of space and or it's getting really heavy, well, look at what you're packing, right? If it doesn't give you more than one good use, like two or more, then you probably don't need it. So like that poncho, a lot of uses. The tarp, not as so much. I can maybe get a couple of decent uses out of it. Uh, the bivy sack, obvious use of if I go on rest plan, but I did mention about how if I needed to swim this pack across a river, well, I can pull that bivy sack out and I can use that as an impromptu ruck liner for all the items within the pack to help ensure everything that needs to stay dry does, all right? However, if I'm gonna drop anything out of this load to make it fit in here easier, it's gonna be those sheltering items. I will make do with the poncho and the wooby nine times out of 10, right? Until things get really cold. Now, all this is super cool, all right? You know, I got this like salty looking pack that's, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old and all, you know, a cobra hood and, and all that. None of this matters if I don't know how to use the stuff that's in this pack, all right? I have to know how to use all of these various items and understand when it's smart to pack them and when it's not smart to pack them. So I pack appropriately. And the only way I'm gonna be able to know that is if I educate and I train. So if you don't take your training seriously for those tactical professionals that are out there, or you are just hoarding all of the high dollar, super cool kit, and it just gets packed somewhere and put into a box or a closet or your trunk, and you never take it out and use it, you never learn how to use it, then if you ever need to, you're not gonna know what to do, and you're probably gonna be doing the wrong thing that's gonna get you hurt or worse. So make sure you're coming out and getting training. And one of the ways you can do that is through Orion and take the small unit maneuver class because we will cover stuff like this in the class, all right? So get training. There's a lot of other good places out there that you can do this. Um, but as far as I know, Orion Training Group is one of the few that is offering a class like this uh, and not just, you know, close quarters battle and firearms. All good stuff but expand your horizons a little bit, especially if this interests you. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure to hit uh, like and subscribe and uh, hit us up in the comments. Thanks.